We welcome all visitors and members of this area of faith community. It is good to welcome you back to Mass and celebrate with you through word and sacrament. Just a reminder that at this time, singing will be done by the cantor. We invite you to hum along or listen with your ears and heart as the words are sung. God has gathered us together to renew our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we gather in prayer this day, we are ever mindful, like Peter and the disciples, that Jesus invites us to know who he is. Who do you say that I am is the question that Jesus poses to the disciples and to you and I as we gather for worship this day. So let us be ever mindful of the Christ who dwells in our hearts, who brings us forgiveness and mercy, this same Jesus who offers us today the gift of his presence through prayer. Lord Jesus, you are hope for the world. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are food for the hungry. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are forgiveness for the sinner. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray.
O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you down from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will pray, sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The Lord is exalted and sees those who are lowly and the proud the Lord knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments, and how unsearchable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him, and through him, and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter sent a reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld will not, shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. I will give you the keys. Do you remember that day? Do you remember that moment when your parents said to you for the very first time, you can have the keys? Maybe it wasn't your parents. Maybe it was later in life and maybe it was somebody else. But nonetheless, we've all had that moment, that experience, why we have a combination of emotions and feelings that happens when that time comes, when finally uh, parents or whomever says to you and I, you can have the keys. And with those keys, of course, comes this exhilaration, this excitement, this fact that, thanks be to God, I'm free. Right? Free keys bring with it lots of freedom. You and I, the opportunity to finally make that big move. And the big move is we move from the passenger seat to the driver's seat. And with that comes excitement and joy and freedom and life and all those things that come with it, but also comes responsibility and a bit of fear and trepidation. I can still remember the first time I was given the keys, and it wasn't after I got my driver's license. It was long before. Based upon today's standards, my parents would have been thrown in jail <laughs> because my dad gave me the keys. Actually, he didn't give me the keys because the keys were always in the vehicles. We never took them out. The keys were always there, and they were vehicles were always unlocked. Of course, we we lived on the farm, but I can remember the very first time my dad giving me the instruction to get into the truck, which we had named Ringo, and to drive it down the road ditch along a main U.S. highway. But I had to stay in the road ditch because, of course, I was only nine years old. <laughs> Barely tall enough to get my foot on the clutch and the brake and well, the accelerator as well. But I can still remember how deathly afraid that moment was. So how do you think Peter felt? I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Was Peter excited? I bet he was. Nervous? If I were him, I certainly would be. Scared to death? Absolutely. Because Peter had no idea, he didn't have a clue as to what those keys meant. Not to mention what those keys unlocked or locked. 
He still had no idea what those keys started up or turned off. He had no idea what those keys would entail him to, the power that would come with them, the challenges that it would bring with them, and of course the responsibilities that were part of them. And even though Peter got it right in today's gospel, and because of that he was entrusted with these keys, the reality is we know from the gospel readings Peter got it wrong more often than he got it right. So isn't it interesting then that Jesus would choose to entrust these keys to somebody who was such a fool, to somebody who was so well ill-equipped to be able to be that rock on which God would build his church. But nonetheless, there we are. Peter, he's given the keys, and we know the power that comes with that. We know the exhilaration, we know the responsibility, but nonetheless, they are given to Peter and they are given to you and I. What do we do with these keys? Well, of course, we are invited to unlock. We are invited to allow the keys to open up. We are invited to allow the keys to start up. We are invited to use these keys to allow people to gain access to the kingdom of heaven. And remember, my friends, the kingdom of heaven is more about a relationship than it necessarily is a place. So these keys, the keys to the kingdom of heaven, given to Peter, also entrusted to you and I as disciples of Christ, need to unlock, what are we unlocking? We're unlocking the hearts and the minds, first of all, of ourselves and of the people around us, so that, so that the light might enter that love might come with it, that freedom might enter through the forgiveness of sins, and that we might allow then the keys, which is Jesus Christ himself, to unlock for us all that that, well, that keeps us locked in, that keeps us from preventing ourselves and others from truly knowing the freedom and the joy and the responsibility and the grace that comes with being part of and being invited into this incredible kingdom. For the kingdom of heaven is about a relationship that we have with God, a relationship that is founded on forgiveness and peace, a relationship that is founded on reconciliation and compassion, a relationship that is built upon life and love itself. And it is through these why then we come to know and that we come to experience, and that we come to receive all that we could ever want, ask for, or become. And that is being given the very gifts in the real presence of Christ in our life. So Peter is given the keys, and we know that, well, he never always had it perfect. He never always did it right. But God chose to call and to choose Peter nonetheless, because he doesn't choose those who are equipped. He equips those he calls, and he gives Peter and you and I the keys. Let's use them wisely. Let's use them to open up possibilities and avenues and doorways and hallways that will enable you and I and those that we love and that we encounter each and every week to pass in and through safely and lovingly and with forgiveness and understanding. Because then we won't have to wait until we die to enter through the gates of the kingdom of heaven because we will experience it now because with Peter, you can have the keys. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer to the Lord today the needs and prayers of this church gathered in this, in this place. For the church, that we may be a people open to all and welcoming the marginalized and outcast, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For policies in our country that reflect openness and compassion to those in need, especially the unborn and the elderly, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For favorable weather, for our crops and for the safety of those traveling and for those serving in our military, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are part of this community of faith, may we recognize our prejudices and learn to welcome every stranger. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and grieving, and for those who have died, remembering Arland and Bonnie Lindquist, George Borgading, and Shannon Bolter, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prayers written in our book of prayer requests and those we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, we thank you for the gift of your Son, for the keys that you have entrusted to our loving care that we might open up the way for your presence and your life in our midst. Hear us then as we come before you with grateful hearts, offering to you these our petitions and prayers. Answer them according to your will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. 
And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and to always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when is once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through, your passion, through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and to whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our sisters and our brothers who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I would ask that you please remember in your prayers the repose of the soul of Father Bob Goblish, a retired priest of our diocese who died this past week. His funeral mass will be celebrated at the Church of St. Mary in Sleepy Eye this coming Monday morning at 11 o'clock. Due to that funeral mass for Father Bob that I will be attending, the daily mass here at St. Mary's in Wilmer on Monday morning has been moved to 8.30 rather than 9 o'clock. So please notice that cha time, uh, uh, time change. Uh, for the daily mass here at St. Mary's. Father Bob Gobush uh, served for many years in our diocese, mostly on the western frontier where God dwells abundantly because I'm from that area. Um, he served in the Madison and Ortonville parishes as well as Ivanhoe Wilno uh, and many of those parishes. So please remember Father Bob in your prayers, eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. And may he rest in peace. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.
my way, be my truth, be my life.